Hi, I'm Bill Gokey, and this is my wife, Mary Pat, and we're directors of Frontline Ministries International and pastors of Frontline Worship Center in Jackson Township, Ohio. And today, we'd like to tell you how we were healed of malaria this past summer. We led a team of 14 to northern Ghana this past summer. We held our first Kingdom Bible School for indigenous pastors and leaders on land that a Muslim chief gave us several years ago. We planted a few churches, and we held a crusade in the city of Sola. While we were in northern Ghana, I began experiencing many of the symptoms of malaria. Uh, high fevers up, up to 105 degrees at night. I uh, began to have digestive problems, uh, dehydration, uh, difficulty sleeping. Even your desire to eat and drink mm -hmm. are affected. Yeah. It was amazing. God sustained him during that 10-day period of time in such a supernatural way. So even with these, these symptoms, high fever, 105, he was even able to preach at our crusade. He was teaching in the, in the Bible school, and we were all absolutely amazed at the power of God on you. I was receiving prayer from the team and others uh, while in Ghana, and um, one particular lunchtime, uh, they were praying for me, and I actually had a vision, and others had various visions, of the enemy leaving, an uh, <laughs> ugly, demonic, evil uh, person leaving me. And I even wrote a song about it, The Enemy Is Done. Mm -hmm. So nearing the end of the trip, uh, we had our last outreach, the, the very last night actually, and I had a, a little bit of discomfort in my head, but nothing to speak of. Got on the plane to go home and just felt, whoa, overwhelmed with many of the same symptoms he was talking about. And so as we pulled into Cleveland, Ohio, after some prayer on the plane, I was feeling better and stronger and said goodbye to the team. Bless you. It was a wonderful trip. And then we both went home, and I, both, I proceeded to go downhill. After we got home, both of us were experiencing the severe symptoms of malaria. And so the decision was made to start medication and enter the hospital. After we were in the hospital, they began to test us further to find out what strain of malaria that we had. They also uh, continued our medication, sometimes changing it, in order to best fight the malaria in our bodies. After a few days in the hospital, it was determined that we had the most severe and aggressive form of malaria, referred to as Parmesium falciparum, uh, many times referred to as cerebral malaria. My condition seemed to worsen very quickly. It seemed as though the parasites had really entered my lungs, and I'd never had any lung problems before. This was all new. And I remember a point at the very beginning of this that I said, Papa, I said, what is happening to me? And I distinctly heard him speak to me in my heart, and he said, you are dying, but you will not die. As for me, I was experiencing the same symptoms that I had uh, in Ghana, and they were increasing. They were becoming more severe. My vitals seemed to deteriorate very quickly. I was spiraling downward. I was told that I had a seizure in the arms of our son, Michael. And that was a very intense time for everyone. <laughs> our whole family was highly concerned at that point. They moved me to ICU. Um, my condition did rapidly continue to decrease. And my family was called in. They were told that I was going to die and that they should say goodbye to their mother. But they were very strong and they refused to believe that report, to receive that report. And they said, no, mom, you will live and not die. You will declare the works of the Lord. And so things really heated up at that point and they felt that I needed to be moved to another place. So they tried to see if there were openings at Cleveland Clinic and there were no beds. They tried to transfer or to see if there would be an opening for a transfer to University Hospital. Uh, in Cleveland also, but there was a 20-bed waiting limit, a waiting time. And so they prayed together and others were praying all around the world. We had such wonderful prayer going on at this point. And they were praying and within that short few minutes of time, there was a phone call from University Hospital saying a bed had opened up. I mean, it was just absolutely miraculous. And that a helicopter was on its way uh, to enable me to be life flighted to University Hospital. I was actually looking out the window as she was put on the life flight helicopter 
And one of the things about malaria is that you don't feel the normal emotions of that, but I clearly remember that happening. I was also told that while still at Akron General, that I needed to be intubated, which means that I would be put on a respirator, I couldn't breathe, and that uh, breathing tubes would be down in my lungs and I would also be having a feeding tube, and I don't remember that. So when I arrived at University Hospital, apparently what had already taken place at Akron General had to be redone, so they had to go through that procedure again. And so I was sedated uh, for a, a short period of time, and then when I came out of the sedation, um, Heidi Baker was there, uh, who had been visiting Cleveland as part of Breakthrough Cleveland for a conference, and she's a good friend, uh, that we had worked with Heidi in the Ministry of Iris in Mozambique, and she was there to pray for me as well. So it was a very, very touching time. I was transported to University Hospital by ambulance, and Heidi Baker ended up praying for me. After a couple of days, they determined that I was well enough to go home. So after 14 days of fever and struggling with all the symptoms of malaria, God came in and took the malaria out of my blood, and I was healed. I never saw the x-rays to my lungs, but I was told that they were completely clouded over, that the parasites had so consumed my lungs that I would have died from, from the lungs, from not have, being able to breathe at all, except for one small square somewhere in the x-rays of my lungs that never, never could be uh, penetrated by the parasites and nobody could explain it. How could that be? So that was also the Lord and His sustaining power. It was really wonderful. Uh, during the time that I was in that uh, medical intensive care unit in University Hospital, I just felt that God was doing something and I felt no fear and I felt total peace actually through the entire process. Even though I was able to feel and experience all the symptoms, I really had absolutely no fear. It was amazing, amazing supernatural sustaining power of God. On the 27th of July, I was having a particularly difficult day and time, and that night it was also pretty challenging to breathe and some other things that I was going through. And so on the morning of the 28th, I, w I was very surprised when the respiratory therapist looked at my x-rays and my vitals and she said, this is amazing. She said, are you a deep sea scuba diver? Scuba diver? Your lungs look like those of a scuba diver. So I looked at her with the tubes in my mouth and, you know, said, shook my head no. And she said, well, your scores went from a, I don't know from what, but I needed a minus 20. I don't know what that means, but I had a minus 34. And she said, I'm turning off the breathing machine right now, the respirator. And she said, your job is just to breathe. So I looked at her and I was trusting God. She turned off the breathing machine or the respirator and she said, breathe. And I went, <gasps> I felt like I was breathing through a straw. It was incredible. Then normally they pull the tubes out then at that point. But for a number of reasons, they didn't get to do that until about 25 minutes later. My room was filled with people who had been watching this whole process, doctors and nurses and everyone. And she pulled the tubes out and I could immediately breathe. I could speak and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It was a very emotional time because he gave me new lungs, saved my life, and it was totally miraculous. Everyone was, was amazed at this. It was a suddenly that we had been praying for. Billa told me later that he knew that I needed a, a suddenly, and Jesus came in my room and gave it to me. We were praying for a suddenly, and a suddenly is what she received. I heard word that she was eating, she was breathing, she was eating, she was moving with uh, ease and that was an absolute miracle because we assumed that she would have to go through a lot of rehabilitation for a long time. I was told by the physical therapist when she looked at my mobility thinking at first that I might have to have months and months, five more months of therapy and she said you don't need any therapy this is amazing and so they had said to my family that if I don't die I may be on the respirator the rest of my life not only was I off the respirator, I was rebounding so quickly. All my bodily functions were working. It was so incredible. The doctors were amazed. The nurses couldn't believe it. I was sign in a wonder, a walking miracle of Jesus. I was home in my son's house the 30th, the morning of the 28th of July. I was on a respirator. Glory to God. I experienced a miraculous touch from heaven. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus. And may you all know 
that our trust, our hope, is in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he's done for us, he can and will do for you, because he is Lord of all. If you would like to have a relationship with Jesus, be strengthened in your faith, or to receive a prayer for healing, you can watch the next portion of this video clip, which is called Healed of Malaria Part 2.